Well, this is a this is a tough hack to follow this the presentation, but you were wondering where the edge of the network is. For me, the edge is that. If I cross it, I fall down. It's one o'clock in, in my head because I live in Silicon Valley. So I'm going to try to basically stay focused a little bit. A little bit about me. I've been in the industry 32 years, like you, Carol. Uh, I'm Canadian. I have to work at Nortel because every Canadian I have to work at Nortel. Then I went at Cisco running iOS. Then I do Juniper for five years running Junos. And I still do operating system. And we can talk about that a little bit. But roughly speaking, what's interesting in access is essentially it's the last mile. But for a long time, for a networking vendor, that was the poor children of networking. It's a hard place to build product. They have to leave outside and they have to leave for decades, meaning that you don't have the luxury to build it like you did it in the core and the edge. You cannot make everything redundant. You cannot do those trick if you want. So if I can, ah, there it is. So if you look a little bit about the technology driver or the industry driver, they're all the same. On the question around is the DevOps model going to change the industry? I believe so, simply because if you look at the workflow, where 80% or 70% of the operator cost is basically automa automating those workflow, honestly, within five to 10 years, if you take US uh, as a benchmark, we're all an aging population here, it's fair to say. Within 10 years, two thirds of that workforce is going to retire. And the people that are going to replace them, your kid, I have no intent to work on the weekend, find a maintenance window at 3 in the morning, and work like that. So it's over. So it's going to happen simply because it must be. Biggest impact on virtualization and open source as a networking vendor, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we have to build everything. We have to build the ASIC. We have to build the OS. We have to build the, the code, the stack, everything you can name. And we have no interest to collaborate together because the industry was pushing us in a way where you were buying the full flesh solution. So for me, for a long time, standard was the lowest denominator. And the day I was saying, I'm supporting it, I was doing private extension. And I was forcing you to use each one of them as a feature. That was the game. I think what is changing is this, this thing is turning every one of us networking vendor as a system integrator. You can't build everything the whole way. If you try, you're not going to be as profitable and you're going to be slow to go to market. And what's interesting with the open source, I use it, but I still have the problem that we need to harden this code. That's why I go with partner like you know, MetaSwitch, I, because I get a commercial stack that has the contribution of many, and then I can go to market with a carrier class offering. So the point is that for me, these things are tools. They're not the solution. They're not the end state. But you better learn how to do it. That slide has been there for a decade, crossing the cost of investment, revenue, and profitability. It's still the same slide. And nothing has been done really to change that. But I can tell you as a sense of urgency, probably in US within five to 10 years, the people that cannot resolve that curve are going to be bankrupt. Instead of being acquired to acquire customer, they are the one that cannot figure it out, are simply going to run out of money run that network. That's unprecedented if you look at this in the industry. It used to be a different industry in the telecom space. Uh, we talk a lot about device-centric work. We don't really talk about subscriber experience. And what's happened is there's not a lot of work done to say what does it mean? What do you need to do this? We talk all the time in the industry about the above. And I do believe they're going to influence a lot how you use these Legos if you want to assemble the solution. But in itself, what it is to have subscriber experience? Is it speed and feed only? If you look at the industry the last 10 years, a big debate has been around how many, how many meg do you need to carry your traffic at home? You can make the deba debate about do you need 100, a gig, 10 gig, but at the end, the only thing you're doing is you're reducing essentially your investment in access to that. And then you're debating about the technology to get there. And depending if you're an MSO, a cable company, or a wireline, or a mobile, you can plug your technology and fight on the merit, essentially, to do the last mile. How far can it go? How fast can it reach? And essentially, what's the throughput of it? Then you can debate about, is it a latency issue? What's happened if there's no latency? 
Will you build the network the same way? And the conclusion is, I think we need to change the thinking. Because if you're coming from the subscriber in the network, I think you will do it in the different ways if you have the chance to do it again. And, and that's the best we're going to try to do. So let's talk about the subscriber experience. In access, you can provide connectivity to the end user. You can provide equipment, or you can put a DMARC wherever you want. For a long time in the US, the DMARC was put an ONT outside the house and leave it there. That's the DMARC. And anything behind, you're on your own. Residential gateway, you buy it yourself, have fun, and I'll do everything to prove it's not my network, which is basically create the problem. That was the definition of subscriber experience. It's not me, it's yours. Um, so ultimately, it was a connect connectivity issue. As the device exploded, as the, you know, we have to think about addressing all those things, but ultimately, that was essentially, there's a pipe, and there's a, something to connect you to the pipe. And you decide as a service provider if you want to play that role only, not roll another truck, and life is good. The problem was you, could, you can't control what's outside anymore. The moment you connect something, and as the home becomes smart more and more, you're going to end up anyway with the support call. You're going to have to fix it, and the customer will associate their frustration to your network, which is a new sense. And as competition happening, is the first time also we see now, look, the traffic is exploding, the number of devices is exploding, the number of subscribers is not. So if you're gonna take share now, you're gonna have to take it from each other. That's the first time we saw that happening in US three, four years ago, and largely because Google started the game to say, and we're gonna drop something over there, we're gonna force the demand, and you guys are gonna have to provide the pipe. If you want to be a plumber, that's basically your business model. The over the top guy will win at that game. So if you look at today's game, we're not just connecting a device, a PC, a terminal, or a tablet. We're dealing with this thing. And the real question is, who's gonna be on top of the winner out of it? This is back to the over the top argument versus the service provider. Uh, there's a reflection in the industry that needs to happen. Otherwise, you turn yourself into a wholesale, or essentially just a cost per, per bytes. Back to the original ARPU issue. So is that your destiny? We believe there's something better that needs to happen, because as a service provider, what's great is nobody's serving the home. And I doubt the ecosystem are gonna be compelled to work together. You're talking control. You're talking meter, you're talking power, you're talking everything. None of this will be a universal standard. So the question is, if nobody's going to step up, this is essentially a market that is unserved. And that's where we see a lot of the issue happening with service provider is who has the guts to get inside that complexity and basically orchestrate the result. And we still have a lot of debate uh, in the industry, uh, for, for example, only 50% of service provider that we serve uh, have decided to move inside the house. So imagine, they're still at debating if they stay outside versus going inside just to provide a gateway. If you think like this, you're thinking into a completely different ways to serve them this, uh, the, this market. You have to say to first your pipe, uh, are you going to offer differentiated services? You have all the technology moving forward. Will it be QoS? Uh, different ways to label, different ways to tag, different ways to prioritize, and you're the only one that controls this part of the network. Nobody can do that for you. Doesn't matter that Alexa say, go faster. If your device doesn't allow that traffic to go faster, it won't go faster. You have that power, but it means also make it more, much more flexible than today and the demark between do you need a pipe for business, residential, or mobile, as the technology blend, as things like NG Pound 2, for example, emerge, you have essentially the ability to have a tunable gigabit, offer completely differentiated service for the first time, and manage one network versus three. You want to talk about OPEX reduction? That's it. It's right there, starting from there. Uh, what else can you do? Well, that gateway or that CPE, could do a, it could use a lot more intelligence, but first you have to decide to manage it. It's an endpoint. 
It should be for you as precious as a core element or a router or a switch. If you manage that network element, you have full visibility over the subscriber, the traffic, the usage, the pattern. And with that knowledge and the analytic, you can optimize the service. That's a business offering. If you limit yourself to say it's an SSID, you're never going to get there. So for me, it's like, OK, there, this is this notion that time for you to own this and manage it as a services. Um, stop ignoring Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is your ally. Because if you can turn Wi-Fi as a seamless experience, no, 43% of your call disappear. That's customer satisfaction all the way. And the technology is evolving to a point that it's going to get there. The smartness on Wi-Fi is going to reach that point. Uh, smart home, it's connectivity to a lot of ecosystem. You have a role to play. And in a fun way, what's hard for service provider is you're not really good at building ecosystem out of your home. An ecosystem has been largely, you play in my sandbox, then you're my friend. This is a model where all those ecosystems can coexist if you basically become a catalyst for success. Uh, and you're going to have to focus this. This is the personal experience. This is not the connectivity. It's what you do with it. So when we look at this, we're like, OK, this is a new virtual service provider. You're going to have to make decision. But the problem is, like it or not, all of this is going to happen over your network. It's either on your dime, or you're going to monetize it in a way that essentially can be profitable, which lead into the question is, what are you going to do with the giant flywheel that we call access? It's been there for decades. It's really hard to tune you for Cliff. Uh, it's a lot of investment. It's hard to stop. And it has a huge mass because you have to deploy. And 43% of your costs is going to be in deployment. So you have to be careful how you're going to do it. So for the people involved in access, and I know some of you are thinking about what the new access looks like, there's different ways you can come from. And it's all depend on where you're starting if you want. If you've been building network, look, <laughs> I've seen all my life, is you go from the left, and you go across. And eventually, you reach the access in the customer network, if you want. If you think this way, I guarantee you what's going to happen with the access network is you're going to be back into a plumbing game because 90% of your capex is already spent. By the time you reach it, you have left with no capital to transform the economy, and you're going to justify to yourself you need all those network elements. And I guarantee you, you're not going to do a lot more than plumbing if you think like that. So we see a set of service provider, and there's those decisions that still think access is speed, feed, and reach. That's all that matters. OK. That's one way to think about it. If you're coming from the data center model, the world starts to look like this. If you notice, there's a bunch of white box in this thing. Everything gets replaced. Uh, everything gets standardized. Everything gets virtualized and capacity. And it's more a question of how many VM you can span and what you can do with those VM. What's the state of that VM? Challenge with that model is it's literally like a mainframe debate. Do you centralize now everything in that capacity, extract from all the network elements, subscriber management, QoS, routing, multicast, uh, authentication, and you name it, move it there in the big mainframe, and everything become essentially like a dump terminal. I'm old enough in the industry to tell you, when I started, that was what the mainframe looks like. The network elements were all the same, the terminal, and the intelligence was centralized processing. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that I think you're going to be a little bit more pragmatic, because if you go all the way with this, you're going to deal with a lot of complexity. And you're going to be on your own to try to integrate all of this. And it's a big stretch. But there is a lot of partner you can now find in the industry to enable part of those domains to evolve this way. So the question, do you do the big bang? Or do you go domain by domain? Or you become pragmatic enough to say, it depends. It depends on brownfield versus greenfield. Uh, but I want to reiterate that the fact it works in the data center, the fact that Google or Facebook can scale, doesn't mean it works in the network. There's a lot of difference to try to deploy those technologies in the CEO. 
And I think you're all gonna have to learn the recipe if you want. Um, okay, so is there a different way as well? If you're coming from core, why don't we re forget to centralize everything, we're gonna change every CO, and we're gonna take the best of breed of the technology if you want. If you think this way, you start retiring a little bit the edge and the aggregation, and you start, you speak a new language, spine and leave, and essentially control point in the different ways. There's value to do it, we see it. I think we're all working in experiment. I think all the service providers that I know have somewhere in the lab a group that play with this thing. And the question is, is that the ultimate solution? I believe, like everything else, it's gonna play a role, uh, and, but it's largely with Greenfield. If you have a clean shot, you don't have any constraint, you don't have any incumbency or legacy network, yeah, you could probably design that and make it work. And the question is, right now, you're gonna have to prove the scale of it. And it's not just the Warline guy that are trying to do that. Uh, Mr. Jeff, you're probably gonna talk about it later on. Uh, the cable guys also are playing with those notions. The universal CMTS, or are you extracting the function and you're putting it in the CO2? You just call it a head end. It's different, but it's the same thing. So the question again is, you had the stage in the industry where I would encourage you to say there's multiple ways, uh, but don't fool yourself. It's like you are now on the bleeding edge to become the system integrator and by yourself resolve the tension in the system. So one of the things we did at Calyx was, okay, every time you start from the left, you cross all those dimensions, is there another way? What will happen if you start from the other side? You start from the you. How will this network have to look like so you'll be happy? And so let's try this thing, exercise. Uh, we told ourselves to say, well, you would like new service on demand, but it is free. You would like the service to be everywhere, new location, because you can't distinguish anymore business, residential, where you work, live, and play, okay. You would like to enable new market. You're transforming an ecosystem, this IoT, and all of this get together. And things like VR are gonna change the nature of the network. Uh, it's not just latency, it's, it's what the human brain looks in terms of response. And I think you're gonna see a lot more of autonomous system emerging that you won't control. They're gonna have the ability to make their own decision as well. So for us, we say, okay, first thing I would like to do is as a user, is I don't want to be told that because I'm over cable, or coax, or fiber, or over the air, that my experience is different. So the, one of the first experiments we're trying to do is, could you make any of those things work the same way, independently of the pound, independently of the technology, independently of the fee? Because if you start thinking like that, it forces you to design your system with abstraction in mind, taking a page of the data center, if you want. Uh, you will ask yourself, okay, well, I want operational saving, that's the DevOps, I want to turn services faster. That's from the pace of the Facebook. I have to be able to turn those things. And I don't have labs anymore where I have nine months to test everything, and I have nine months to integrate in an OSS after that. You have to be able to do way faster than that. If you lose subscriber visibility because you're mapping everything on the other side to a flow, you're never gonna know really what they do with, with this thing. So should you enforce policy closely? more closely? Should you do caching closely? Should you be close to that endpoint if you want? And that's why we look at analytic, and ultimately, you can reduce it to just a data center, because those equipment needs to reach you. It works if you think there's gonna be 50 data center that all connect around a radius of 50 miles, everything. That's not where we live in rural America. You have to get there. So there's gonna be equipment you can put in a data center, in a cabinet, some are gonna have to be outside, and some are gonna need to be ardent or distributed in, in a way to support that. So we look at this into, okay, what will this new network element needs to do? This is the yellow attribute, and you can see the page of everything. Yes, I like to build those network elements with a much more competitive cost. I have to leverage the industry. I'm all about white silicone. I should leverage as much as I can and then put the software and the intelligence needed at the right place in order to do that. I have to be able to program and control an instrument. I have to be able to have this network 
with a level of availability way higher than today. Because remember, you cannot make it redundant everywhere. So the software that you're going to build has to be more resilient, much more always on. But the good thing is if you really drink the Kool-Aid of container, local failures should be able to resist without bringing down the whole system like my old days. Uh, so you have to think into a network which is much more elastic. This is the adaptability to the flows. You have to reduce the outage, and you have to basically make it secure. And it has to be able to distinguish what type of customer you're serving, business, residential, and the function, and the amount of real time you're going to need to process. So when you really look into this, you're like, OK, if we were ever to build it this way, which capacity from the edge or from the compute space should be better served to make it closer to the customer? And this is a thing which is really hard right now. This is not a natural act to take a router or a hedge compute and say that capability should move there versus moving back to the left. But they will happen in the industry. And that will be an interesting battle because what you're starting to cross, in case you don't know, is literally 50% of revenue of a networking vendor is in the edge. So this notion you're extracting value out of the hedge, it's a big battle because you're touching the cash cow. But we believe, again, if you have a green field, you're starting from scratch, no constraint, no market to protect, that there is capacity that need to get closer to the subscriber. And if you want, if you want to do the maths, uh, you know them while well, you're talking about 40 to 50% of how an OPEX, CAPEX could be essentially put it there, uh, put aside the reduction in complexity. So as a networking vendor, we also envision that there's going to be multiple ways to provision and manage from the green field to the brown field to the OSS that refuse to, to die. We have to support a word of any SDN if you want. I have to have the ability to support different ways to instrument, provision, and manage our system. And if I limit myself to one way, I'm not helping you to succeed and transition and migrate the network. So we're all about that. I think the industry is going to get there. And I think as a vendor, we, we start to admit that if the complexity becomes to a point that you cannot even turn on the service we sell you, it's going to slow our own profitability, if you want. So that divide is becoming the complexity of the network that we need to get out of it. So this is, this is a wish also. So if you were to build a new type of access, I think it could look like that. Leverage the industry from the transport, if you want, the reachability, make it adaptive, and then bring the capability that you need into it. And that will be, a, if you start this way, I guarantee you that you will end up with a different result than starting from the left in the traditional ways moving your way up. Question is, who's going to do that? And we see people all over the map on this thing. I think we're going to get there. Uh, and we're going to get there fast because if this pipe is not doing better than what is, that will be the bottleneck between the content and the subscriber experience. And you're going to be blamed for it. So my advice is simply try to jump right now. Time to change the flyway of access. But more important is once you do it, think about the subscriber experience, the way they see it, not the way that you want them to see your network. And that's it. And I'm... I guess I'm on time a little bit. Great, thank you. Right.